Item number, SCP-052. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures Although it is not possible to remove SCP-052 from the New York subway system, its predictable behavior allows the Foundation to prevent the public from encountering it. The 59th Street ABCD station is to be closed to the public from 11pm to 1am, on Saturdays and Sundays, under the pretext of track maintenance. During that time, the station is to be staffed with agents from Mobile Task Force Gamma-6. Agents have been ordered to prevent accidental public access to the station, and to capture anyone seen leaving SCP-052. Anyone who has been on SCP-052 must be transported to Site-21 for debriefing and processing. Members of the public who see SCP-052 may be released after the administration of a Class B amnestic. Description: SCP-052 is a Type R4 New York City subway train. Official records indicate this train was built in 1932 and decommissioned for scrap in 1975. Nevertheless, it continues to appear on the Uptown AD track at the 59th Street and 8th Avenue station at 11.57 p.m. every Saturday. The train is in perfect condition and labeled as an A-train. SCP-052 appears at the designated time, opens its doors to accept and discharge passengers for approximately five minutes, then closes its doors and disappears. It does not appear to ever contain passengers, except for those leaving the train during its appearance. The majority of subjects that have boarded SCP-052 have not been recovered. Passengers leaving SCP-052 claim to have boarded on various dates, from 1976 up to 2204. The latter claims he thought SCP-052 was a 300th anniversary special train. Subjects retain no knowledge of time on board. Addendum: Passengers leaving SCP-052 must be brought to Site-21 and interrogated to determine their origin and possible threat to the current time stream. Generally, Passengers from the past may be given Class A amnestics and reintegrated into society. Passengers from the future must be held indefinitely. Site 21 currently holds 26 recovered passengers. Despite our protocols to prevent public access, we are still receiving subjects from the future. Although some are from alternate timelines, it is possible SCP-052 will begin to appear at another time and place, requiring expanded containment. The Foundation has placed several subjects onto the train in an attempt to understand its activities when not visible. Test 052-1 May 31st, 2009 Agent placed on train. Not recovered as of present date. Test 052-2 June 6th, 2009 Agent enters train. Not recovered, as he apparently returned to 1980 and was killed in a confrontation with Test 052-3 See notes on recovered passenger 052-4 After test 052-3, O5 Command issued orders that no further agents should be risked as passengers on SCP-052. Consideration has been given to using Class D personnel in their place, but the risk of releasing them into the past is too great. Log of recovered passengers in Foundation custody Passenger 052-1 Entered train July 14th, 2012. Recovered. March 8th, 2008. Notes. An accountant, on the way home from the theater when she entered the train, 052-1 has expressed surprise and dismay to have traveled back in time four years, but appears to be otherwise unchanged and unharmed. She has been determined to currently exist in this timeline and must be held indefinitely to prevent unwanted temporal effects. Passenger 052-2. Entered train, June 12th, 1976. Recovered. March 15th, 2008. Notes. Subject entered train when lost on the way to Studio 54. Although unharmed and not a temporal threat, 052-2 is being held as the examining psychiatrist believes 32 years is too long a period over which to facilitate successful reintegration. Passenger 052-3. Entered train December 6th, 2014. Recovered June 20th, 2009. Notes. A tourist from Jacksonville, Florida. Subject 052-3 now speaks Albanian instead of English. Held due to 05 orders regarding subjects from the future, as well as possible reintegration difficulties. Passenger 052-4. Entered train June 13th, 2009. 
Recovered June 27th, 2009. Notes. Agent from test 052-3. Agent returned with his hand surgically removed and a note in his pocket with the message. Send no more. Subject does not remember his experience on the train, but when subjected to hypnosis, revealed, data expunged. Passenger 052-5. Agent entered train at unknown future date in violation of protocol. On July 11th, 2009, body of subject was violently thrown from the train, landing 10 meters away. On examination, subject was found to have been data expunged. Whether security should be increased to prevent subject from entering SCP-052 is under consideration. Passenger 052-6 claims to be a level 4 supervisor from the SCP Federation, who entered the train in December 2124. Subject had been administered a Class A prime amnestic prior to boarding, in a successful attempt to avoid the fate of passengers 052-4 and 052-5. Recovered February 6, 2010. As he will never be released from Foundation custody, O5 Command has approved sharing otherwise classified information about other artifacts in our possession, in hopes of gaining new methods of containment and becoming aware of future security breaches. Agent has been cooperative and claims that it is good we do not know how to open SCP-699. Subject turned visibly pale and refused to discuss this item further. To be a survivor of the Great Zombie Plague of 2092, caused by an SCP-008 containment breach. That SCP can be killed by data expunged. Permission to try this has been denied by O5. That he worked for Dr. Jack Bright. Item number. SCP-057. Object class. Safe. Special containment procedures. Site-57 has been constructed to facilitate SCP-057 as relocation is not feasible. It is highly improbable that any outside knowledge of the artifact exists based on the circumstances of its discovery, and thus, security is of minimal concern. No containment procedures are required other than the prevention of unauthorized access. All research will be delegated to Dr. Lewis and Dr. Walston unless further specified. Due to the irretrievability of those placed inside SCP-057, Access will be granted with the approval of no fewer than two members of O5. Description SCP-057 is a subterranean chamber, with an approximate cylindrical height of 3 meters and diameter of 18 meters. Artifact is comprised of impenetrable slate-colored stone. Inside the chamber are dozens of parallelopiped monoliths, extending from floor to ceiling, that slide in various directions while SCP-057 is active. It was discovered several meters below an undisclosed location, during the construction of a secure containment enclosure for SCP- which was consequently assigned an alternate location at Site- An entrance to the chamber is located on the northeast side. When a human enters, the door shuts, and the walls inside the chamber move in such a way as to require the subject's constant attention to maintain a safe course through the artifact. The monoliths slowly open and close until the subject either surrenders or exhausts themselves, at which time SCP-057 crushes them and reverts to its original inactive state after a period of approximately 20 seconds. This process lasts only as long as the subject inside SCP-057 is alive and has proven to take days. Extended testing proposals to gauge the limits of the artifact have been discouraged. All tests on animals, machines, and cadavers have proven futile. Only a living, breathing human being is able to initiate this process upon entering SCP-057. Incident Report 057-1 During the excavation of the artifact, a worker employed by the Foundation for the Unearthing Process entered the chamber without permission at roughly 12.57 a.m. on Upon entering the artifact, the door shut and a dull rumble began to emanate from the chamber. Standard lockdown procedure was initiated, and all personnel in the vicinity were evacuated. A remote-operated vehicle was deployed in order to safely determine the cause of the event, and to gauge any possible threat of SCP-057. Aside from the rumbling noises produced during the event, no anomalous effects outside of the artifact were observed. At 4.32 a.m. of the following day, SCP-057 suddenly shut down and returned to its original state 
as the door shifted back into its open position. At 5.32 a.m., the area was declared safe, and the excavation process was completed without further incident. The worker in question was never recovered. Experiment Log 057-1 A controlled experiment for the purpose of exploring the interior of SCP-057 was requested by Drs. Lewis and Walston, and approved shortly thereafter by O5 Council. D-1021 was equipped with a radio, able to send and receive transmissions to and from the doctors. Upon entering the chamber, the artifact behaved as expected, with the door abruptly shutting behind D-1021. The following is a transcript of the communication between Dr. Lewis, Dr. Walston, and D-1021. D-1021 Hey, you didn't tell me the door would close. Can you open it again? This place gives me the heebie-jeebies. Dr. Lewis, negative. Please proceed as advised and describe your surroundings. D-1021, okay. Well, there are a bunch of stone columns in here, and they keep rearranging their positions. I... Dr. Walston, D-1021, what is your status? D-1021, damn columns snuck up on me. They're moving around, arranging themselves so they... Dr. Walston, what is it? D-1021, the columns behind me are closing up. The ones ahead of me are spreading out. I don't like this. I can't see the door anymore. Dr. Lewis, stay calm. Move with the columns and you'll be fine. D-1021, if I stand still, they'll crush me. I have to keep moving or they'll crush me. 17 seconds of silence. How long am I going to be in here? Dr. Walston, it'll be over soon. You're doing fine. Just keep moving. D-1021. What if I'm trapped in here? I... D-1021 begins to hyperventilate. I'm trapped and they're gonna crush me and... Dr. Lewis. D-1... Hey, listen! Get a hold of yourself. The columns will eventually lead you to an exit. Please relax and continue. Subject calms down noticeably. D-1021. So there's... an exit? Thank God. I was scared there for a second that I'd never... Superfluous dialogue expunged. Dr. Walston. Yep, keep it up and you'll be right as rain. You're doing a great job. You'll have no trouble making parole once this is over. The experiment continues without incident for another 41 minutes. At this point, D-1021 becomes noticeably distressed again. D-1021. I saw how big this place is from the outside. Am I going in a circle? Dr. Lewis. Negative. Continue to proceed through the opening columns. You should find the exit. D-1021. There is no f***ing exit! You bastard sons of f trapped me in here and now I'm f***ing trapped! Subject begins to hyperventilate again. Dr. Walston. You are not trapped, D-1021. Continue to the exit or you will be forced to- D-1021. Forced to what? There's nothing you can do to me, I'm gonna f***ing die, I'm gonna die! Dr. Lewis. D-1021. Panicking will only exacerbate your situation. Focus! D-1021 breaks into tears. He continues to cry for the next two hours as he makes his way through the columns, and does not reply to any questions. Eventually, the crying ceases. D-1021 So this is it. I'm gonna die. I guess I'll just stop and close my eyes. Maybe it won't be so bad. Several minutes of silence. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. D-1021 continues to repeat this for several minutes. Eventually he trails off and falls silent. Dr. Walston. D-1021. D-1021 stops in his tracks, breathing slowly but heavily. Faint sobbing is audible. Dr. Walston. D-1021, proceed through the room as advised. D-1021. I... I... D-1021's gentle sobbing abruptly cuts off. Brief, loud cracking and snapping sounds are heard before the transmission is lost. Strangely, D-1021 did not report any sightings of the remains of the excavation worker lost in Event 057-1. Accordingly, no efforts were made for the recovery of D-1021's remains. As a result of this inconclusive data, reclassification of SCP-057 to Euclid is pending. Item Number SCP-110 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures 
The entrance to SCP-110 is to remain closed off at all times, unless otherwise permitted by O5. The land covering SCP-110, roughly 6 square kilometers, is to be developed into a suburban area that will not attract the attention of the general public. Any movement that SCP-110 might make is to be explained as minute seismic activity. Further complaints are to be ignored. Description: SCP-110 is an entire city that was found buried 0.5 kilometers underneath a large farm in Data Expunged, New York. Survey teams 2 and 3 concluded that the amount of surface area that the city is buried under covers approximately 6 square kilometers. Numerous items of high interest have been discovered within SCP-110 and will henceforth be labeled as SCP-110-XX. Known History of SCP-110 A large earthquake occurs in rural New York, far from any city centers. The only casualties were a man and his dog, so no significant media attention was given to the event. 150519 Minor earthquakes continue to occur in SCP-110's general area. The US federal government dispatches a team of geologists to the site to determine the cause. Results come back inconclusive. 160519 SCP Excavation Team 3 is ordered to investigate the site. Upon arrival, the team is greeted by SCP-110-01, who is then detained and moved to data expunged for further questioning. 2405-19 Information gained from SCP-110-01 and SCP reveal that there has been a large temporal disturbance in the area of SCP-110 that has been causing earthquakes due to displacement of soil and rock. Another SCP excavation team is sent to the site. 0902-2000 After many months of work, SCP excavation teams 4 and 5 are only able to reveal the strong, impenetrable, concrete-like shell of SCP-110. Investigation is halted until further information becomes available. 2507-2000 Due to the recent decoding and decryption of the files contained on SCP- Schematics of SCP-110 have become available. Excavation teams 4 and 5 are sent back on site to locate the primary entrance of SCP-110. 0408-2000 the entrance to SCP-110 has been discovered, and the excavation teams are immediately met with what can only be described as a foul odor. SCP-110 had been an active Class IV city, but due to a temporal accident, its core services were heavily damaged, and the entire city was displaced. Work begins to cover up the existence of SCP-110, its excavation, and the thousands of dead civilians inside. Layout of SCP-110 the general layout of SCP-110 is essentially a series of concentric rings connected by tram, train, and other transportation lines. Surveyors have determined that SCP-110 has numerous sections and levels to it, all with specific functions, which shall be described in greater detail here. Core Services The numerous maps found posted in what were high-traffic areas of SCP-110 labeled a central column of assorted utilities as Core Services. Upon exploration, which was limited due to heavy security restrictions, SCP Exploration Team 1 discovered a myriad of technologies that kept the underground city self-sufficient. Among these technologies were a series of matter reconstitution chambers, a combination reactor that provided energy from both nuclear fusion and geothermal sources, an elaborate water recycling system, and a large waste reconstitution area. The core is surrounded by numerous elevators and emergency stairwells. Numerous areas of the core have been assigned to certain personnel for research. Atrium Colossi This large, open, domed area surrounds the core, and apparently once held vegetation. The dome itself was a massive display, its composition undetermined, which was used solely to depict a sky as an indication of time of day. Numerous tram lines span at least three stories of the atrium, all leading to and from the core. Personnel have described them as looking like spokes in a wheel. Upon discovery, the death toll per area was highest in this area, suggesting that it was a high traffic part of the city. Commercial Ring A ring of what used to be small, independently owned shops and chains surrounds the Atrium Colossi. It is unknown whether or not commercial products were manufactured within the city. 
However, due to the immense size of the core itself and the city's apparent self-reliance, it is highly likely that the core possesses a manufacturing area. Habitation Ring A The styles of living spaces found in this area suggest that its inhabitants were the wealthiest of the city. Numerous documents found throughout the city seem to confirm this assumption as well. Habitation Ring B This entire ring was inhabited by the middle-class citizens of SCP-110. The area is still being searched for items of interest. To date, SCPs have been recovered from here. Habitation Ring C This ring was inhabited by the lower-class citizens of SCP-110. It was found in extremely poor condition and is currently being restored by SCP maintenance teams 1 through 12. It is speculated that due to its location furthest from the core, it suffered the most damage from the temporal disturbance. Damage to SCP-110 increases proportionally to distance from the core. Atria Vegis As so named by numerous maps, these atria were only slightly smaller in area than Atrium Colossi and provided an estimated 80% of all foodstuffs to the population of SCP-110. These atria were once open-air spaces, and thus suffered a great deal of damage upon arrival at the site, as it is estimated that SCP-110 was displaced at least 300 meters below its original position. Recovery of these atria is revealing advanced plant-growing technology that has useful applications. Atrium Animus Atrium Animus was responsible for the remaining 20% of foodstuffs. This atrium has at least 20 stories that were once modeled after the natural environments of the animals that were raised there. Each level had a tightly controlled climate and was subdivided so that different species of animals had no contact with one another. Some of the genetic labs attached to Atrium Animus were found intact and are currently being explored by personnel. Atria Recreus these atria were used for the sole purpose of recreation. They are found between the different habitation rings and typically consist of parks, artificial bodies of water, shopping malls, and other types of civilian recreation. These atria have been suggested for use with SCPs that require an outdoor-like environment or a temperature and humidity controlled environment. Conversion plans have been drawn up. SCP Research Ring this city apparently had its outermost ring devoted to research of safe and Euclid-class SCPs, although no documentation within the city is able to confirm this ring's existence. This suggests that SCP-110 was not originally designed by the private sector, and rather was used as cover for SCPs currently unknown. This ring is highly dangerous, as it has suffered the most damage out of all sectors of SCP-110 thus potentially freeing some of the more dangerous SCPs. Only two members of SCP Exploration Team 3 have survived exploring the ring. Their actions are contained within document number 110-F. Architectural Styles of SCP-110 SCP-110 has been confirmed to be of human origin, and all materials used in its construction are terrestrial. The architectural styles of SCP-110 seem to vary depending on location, the main styles are listed below. Core Services Utilitarian Atrium Colossi Greco-Roman Revival Applies to all atria Commercial Ring Postmodern Habitation Ring A Art Deco Habitation Ring B Expressionist Habitation Ring C Utilitarian SCP Research Ring Too Damage to Determine the different architectural styles of SCP-110 create a problem when attempting to ascertain the general era in which it was built. The earliest documents found claim that the city was built in Data Expunged by the Data Expunged Group. Document number 001-A The Last Note To those who find this document, my name is Stephen Kolsnick. Rather, my name was Stephen Kolsnick. I will be dead by the time you read this. I was the chief engineer of this city, as well as the director of the Data Expunged program, contained within the Outer Containment and Habitation Rings. Due to an accident with an entity known as Data Expunged, the entire city of has been dislocated from its original area of Data Expunged. Nobody here knows where we are. From what I have been able to observe, the Outer Rings have sustained heavy damage, and their contents are threatening the inhabitants of the Inner Rings, though we are surely doomed anyway as the core has sustained heavy damage. 
Three of the main life-sustaining services contained within the core are damaged beyond reasonable repair. Any attempts to repair them would take more time than we have left to live. Life support systems will go down soon. I would estimate that they have between four to ten hours of function left. To whoever finds this, contain data expunged as best you can. Do not follow the same mistakes as our containment procedures had. If you do, you shall regret it. End document. List of notable SCPs found within SCP-110. Data expunged. Item number. SCP-238. Object class. Keter. Special containment procedures. SCP-238 is currently contained by the original means. Current SCP protocols have proven unable to fully contain SCP-238. All exploration of SCP-238 is suspended until full sustained containment has been achieved. Any and all personnel attempting to enter SCP-238 are to be physically restrained and moved to an outside containment area. Upkeep of the current barrier is top priority, and a minimum of two personnel are to be present at all times for upkeep and security. No testing, samples, or exploration may be conducted within SCP-238 until full containment of SCP-238 has been achieved or with approval by Site Overwatch. Any and all persons entering are to be deemed missing, presumed dead. Description SCP-238 is an enormous underground facility with a single entrance on the island Schmitta to the extreme north of Russia. Tunnel networks have been shown to extend for thousands of kilometers with major junctions under data expunged. When originally found, the entrance was sealed behind a massive wall of bricks covered in carvings. This wall was removed and exploration began. Initial tests showed that the walls of SCP-238 were primarily fossilized tissue of unknown origin. Several structures within the facility led initial exploration teams to conclude that SCP-238 is, or was, at least half biological. Shortly after discovery of a central chamber, reported to consist of partially rotted flesh and badly decayed metal structures, personnel began to disappear, and numerous accidents claimed eight lives. Noises and other hallucinations were reported. Eight containment walls and associated personnel were destroyed by unknown means, with a survivor reporting unconfirmed in addition to rapidly escalating aggressive phenomenon by SCP-238. Replacement of the original wall has contained the item effectively, but new SCP containment and research strategies have been requested, as the current containment prevents in-depth exploration and experimentation. Addendum 238-S7 Upon the escape of six juvenile instances of SCP-1013, the local SCP team assigned to SCP-238 reported SCP-1013 squeezing through the original wall and entering the underground chambers. After several members of the O5 Council and Doctors and Doctor were notified, they elected to send in a single team to retrieve SCP-1013. Further information regarding the expedition is found in Document 238-S7A, with Clearance Level 3 required. The end result of the retrieval team were six dead, two critically injured, one missing in action, and the six juvenile SCP-1013 instances being recaptured. Further research into SCP-238 will be carried out under SCP supervision. Document 238-S7A Audio Log of Retrieval of SCP-1013 Begin Skip 3 hours 41 minutes 16 seconds Personnel D-299. I don't see nothing. Not that damn thing we're looking for, not that f***ing suit that was supposed to watch us. Not even a exit. Agent, you will hold your comments. Agent is currently covering the central chamber, so nothing can escape. Personnel D-299. Like us? I don't see... Agent, shut it. Personnel D-299. Why I have to... Agent... I said quiet. Now. Personnel D-299. Carry on like a f***ing boy scout. Agent. Shut the hell up, you idiot. There's movement up ahead. Sounds of scraping and grinding are heard. 
several minutes pass. Personnel D-299. That don't look like number one. But that ain't natural. Agent. Incomprehensible. It's not. Delta 299er, open fire, now! Sounds of gunfire are heard. Agent. Life signs terminated. Personnel D-299. Life signs terminated. End. Item number. SCP-296. Object class. Primary object classification. Safe. Secondary object classification. Safe. Euclid. Keter. Special containment procedures. Armed Containment Site 3 has been in the process of reconstruction since the discovery of SCP-296 in the geometric center of the destruction caused by enactment of Emergency Protocol XT. Reinstallation of tactical thermonuclear devices in a primary perimeter between the established 100-kilometer quarantine perimeter and the exposed region of SCP-296 has also been initiated. As SCP-296 has already exhibited resilience in the face of annihilation-grade weaponry, it is suggested that the TTN devices be calibrated to deliver a high-yield, low-radius explosion, so as to minimize damage to ACS-3's existing structures. All personnel, agents, and researchers assigned to SCP-296 must have no criminal background prior to and during SCP service. Any incidents approximating criminal behavior, as well as suspicions of possible criminal behavior, are to be considered disqualification for assignment to duties directly relating to SCP-296. Description Upon examination of the blast crater occupying ACS-3's previous location, a stone channel was discovered in the crater's geometric center. The stone is of an unknown composition and was utterly unaffected by the detonations of the failsafe devices utilized by Emergency Protocol XT. It is unknown whether the structure designated SCP-296 existed prior to the annihilation of ACS-3's previous installations. However, the contents of SCP-296's interior suggest it was somehow created in the explosion. From the exterior, SCP-296's entry channel appears to simply be a set of carved, fitted stones arranged around a vertical, rectangular shaft. They extend into the ground for several feet before light simply ceases to penetrate and it enters into darkness. Initial attempts to investigate followed standard procedure using Class D personnel. Each maintained contact for a few moments before failing to report back. After several personnel were lost in this manner, robotic surveillance was initiated and revealed the presence of an amphitheater-type structure around which were seated 56 figures of similar appearance. Each was roughly humanoid and made of a substance similar at first glance to ice. Thermal scans indicated a variety of temperatures, varying from figure to figure, and most did not conform to temperatures low enough to support solidification of water. Surveillance also discovered the remains of the Class D personnel. The deceased exhibited the following characteristics. Personnel A. A was found beside a figure, with cylindrical wounds extending through her skull, one each surrounding the previous location of each eye socket, one passing laterally through the skull and excising the ears and all associated organs, one excising the nose, one excising the mouth. Subject's skin had also been removed whole and rested beside the corpse, along with the cylinders of bone flesh, and viscera that have been removed from her skull, which rested atop the skin. Wounds confirmed to match those inflicted by Euclid-class SCP confirmed to have been present at ACS-3 during initial installation's annihilation. Personnel B. B was found collapsed on the ground beside a second figure, with what initially appeared to be total destruction of his skeletal system. Autopsy later revealed the complete liquefaction of all interior bodily systems. Damage confirmed to match those inflicted by Euclid-class SCP, also confirmed to have been present at ACS-3 during enactment of Emergency Protocol XT. Personnel C through G. Personnel C through G were found beside a third figure. All five personnel occupied roughly the same space at different angles. Still technically collectively alive, 
The resulting recombinant creature was quite obviously both insane and irreparably crippled, and was later terminated on sight. Analysis of records pertaining to Keter class SCP indicated conformity to exposure to its exponential recombination effect. SCP was also confirmed to have been contained with an ACS-3 at time of annihilation. Surveillance was forcibly terminated before further information could be gathered. The final image transferred by the robot was that of the figure beside the still active form of personnel C through G shattering and the form of SCP appearing amidst its debris. 76 Class D personnel, 23 agents, and 5 researchers were lost before sufficient information regarding SCP could be dispatched to allow for the forced initiation of its hibernation cycle. SCP has since been relocated to Armed Biocontainment Area 14 and subjected to containment in following with its original procedures. No further attempts to investigate SCP-296 have been made as of this time. Proposals for controlled systematic testing of each figure has been suggested by Dr. but have been denied, on the grounds that the risk of releasing SCP, although its presence within the amphitheater has yet to be confirmed, is too great. Addendum 2961 Dr. has proposed that the SCP objects lost during the destruction of ACS-3's original facility were somehow repositioned within SCP-296's interior. The reason for this is unknown, as is the cause for their apparent containment within the ice figures. The theory is supported by the remarkable similarity between the number of SCP objects thought lost to the detonation and the number of figures within SCP-296. However, the inexplicable 56th figure poses the significant possibility of a threat. Further investigation is postponed. Addendum 2962 Dr. was discovered emerging from within the interior of SCP-296 on date undisclosed. She was immediately apprehended and subjected to questioning, upon which several facts were made clear. Dr. had, against policy, falsified entry documents and passed the security checkpoints necessary to investigate SCP-296's interior. Upon her entry, she reported that she had an instant of feeling psychically violated, followed by immediate unconsciousness. When she awoke, she claims one of the figures contacted her telepathically. She could not identify which one at that time, as there was no corresponding visible stimuli, but she insists it is the 56th figure the additional figure not corresponding to an SCP object previously stored within ACS-3. The figure communicated that it was known, in our language, as Judgment. The Class D personnel initially admitted to its interior were found, as Dr. put it, guilty, and were summarily executed by way of utilization of the SCP objects contained within the figures. It equated the figures to jail cells and implied the release of SCP was analogous to early release for good behavior. She related that judgment will allow innocent personnel entry to the interior of SCP-296, but that it would be responsible for ultimate assignment of guilt, or lack of guilt, of the personnel itself. Addendum 2963 Communications between Dr. R's research team and judgment have revealed new information regarding the figures within SCP-296. They have compiled a list of the SCP objects contained within SCP-296's figures, identical to ACS-3's original contents, as well as a map of the figures and their correlating objects. Judgment has also supplied a number for each figure, which he states corresponds to the number of services it must perform before release. It is assumed that the services to which judgment refers are executions. As there is no way to know whether the information provided is accurate besides expending enough personnel to release the concerned object, further testing has been halted, pending other possible detection methods. It is to be noted that scp tally is quite low. All personnel are to be reminded that under no circumstances are any personnel with suspected criminal behavioral patterns, past or present, to be allowed access to SCP-296. 
Failure to adhere to this directive will result in termination for all parties involved. SCP cannot be allowed to be released. Item Number SCP-359 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-359 is to be contained within a 30 meter by 30 meter by 30 meter concrete structure. This structure is not to be entered between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. local standard time. Any monitoring of SCP-359 during these hours is to be done via security cameras installed within the structure. SCP-359 is to be fed one adult pig every other day. Acceptable substitutions to this diet must be cleared with Agent and Dr. All remnants of SCP-359's prey are to be completely cleaned out of the containment structure by 8.45 p.m. the following day. Description SCP-359 appears to be a metal sculpture of a red-tailed hawk with a wingspan of approximately 4.3 meters, perched atop a 12-meter arch. During daylight hours, approximately 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. local standard time, it displays no signs of movement and does not respond to any external stimuli. However, it has been determined by the Foundation that between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m., it displays the typical behaviors of an adult red-tailed hawk, apart from being nocturnal. SCP-359 is apparently capable of flight. The mechanisms through which it accomplishes this have not been determined, as its wings are too short to allow for flight. SCP-359 was originally located just south of in the United States. It first came to the Foundation's attention when local foresters began finding dead bodies of white-tailed deer, Otocoileus virginianus, in the area, within a one-kilometer radius of the sculpture which looked to have been preyed upon. The white-tailed deer has no natural predators in the state of <laughs> Investigation officially began when motorists on the stretch of state route <laughs> that passes by SCP-359 reported that the hawk was not on top of the arch. On the same day, a local farmer reported finding the sculpture in his field, standing over the body of one of his cows, which had injuries consistent with predation by a large bird of prey. The farmer was administered a Class A amnestic and fed the story that the cow had died of natural causes and its body eaten by coyotes. Route was closed for repairs, and SCP-359 was transferred to its current containment site and replaced with an immobile replica. Addendum 1 Prior to containment, no evidence existed that SCP-359 had ever attempted to prey on anything besides hoofed mammals. However, since being contained, it has attacked, killed, and eaten four D-Class personnel who entered its containment structure during restricted hours. Investigation into the cause of this shift in dietary preferences is ongoing. Item Number SCP-557 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures as it is not possible to relocate SCP-557, Research Site-29 has been built surrounding it. Geographic and aerial surveys of the area have been altered to make it appear to be empty desert, with no valuable archaeological or mineral features. On-site personnel have several tasks. To prevent unauthorized observation of and access to SCP-557. Despite its inhospitable location, Several occult groups, including the appear to be aware of SCP-557 and have shown an interest in it. Unauthorized personnel are to be taken into custody, interrogated, and dealt with appropriately. Anyone attempting to tunnel below level 5 or disturb the stone block in the floor of room 501 is to be terminated immediately. To continue to attempt translation of the records found in SCP-557, to monitor the area for SCP-557-1. SCP-557-1 should be assumed to be Keter class and is to be captured if possible, otherwise terminated. To monitor room 501 and serve as a strike team should anything emerge from beneath it. Description SCP-557 is an Um-An-Nar-Era tomb 
estimated to have been built circa 2400 BCE, on a gravel plain in the empty quarter of northwestern Oman. Investigation of the surrounding area indicates it may be part of the lost city of Ubar. SCP-557 was discovered in 1988 during an inquiry into the disappearance of a geological survey team in the area. Unlike similar structures, SCP-557 includes five underground levels, constructed primarily of sandstone, apparently used as an ancient prison and containment site. Although living quarters and weapons for approximately staff and guards exist on level one, the facility appears to have been slowly abandoned over the years and empty since circa 300 CE. Only two skeletons were found on level one. A substantial library of records was found on level one in a number of ancient languages. Only the records in Egyptian and a final note left in Greek have been translated. Levels two and three are stated in the records to be a prison for heretics and sorcerers, but appear not to have been used for up to 1,000 years before the site was abandoned. Level 4 is described as a place for the abnormal. Skeletons resembling SCP and SCP have been discovered locked away in stone cells, confirming the intent of the structure. Level 5 consists of a 51.2 meter long hallway filled with complex traps and deadfalls, leading to a single large 21.3 meters by 19.7 meters by 5.4 meters room, designated as 501. Although all of the traps appear to have been sprung or cleared, researchers should exercise caution. The door to room 501, anachronistically composed of was found torn down from the inside. Based on the distribution of dust in this area, this event happened only approximately 20 years ago. In the center of the floor of room 501, is a partially buried 3.2 meter by 3.35 meter granite block, estimated to weigh 80,000 kilograms. The block is covered with untranslated runes. A similar, thinner block stands in the room and shows evidence that a living being, designated SCP-557-1, was chained to it, using chains from the same material as the door. No evidence of the continued presence of SCP-557-1 has been found. Translated records only refer to SCP-557-1 as the prisoner, with the exception of one reference in Egyptian to the bastard son of Apep. Addendum Translation of a note found in the records room. I will write in Greek so that any learned man who finds this place will understand. I am the last of the keepers, and I will be dead soon. The sands are taking this place, and perhaps it is for the best. The prisoner must not escape, and the gateway to the dark must never be opened. I do not think the gate can be moved, but who knows of the prisoner? Not even the gods could kill it, and it was only with their help that he was secured. Without the rituals, I do not know. Secure the door the best you can, and never move the stone. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now, and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.